Franz Werner, how do you react to one vaccine at an unimaginable 90 degrees Fahrenheit and another one being refrigerated? How does that occur? Well, it depends most probably on how you're um, working with the mRNA, how you're stabilizing the RNA, and how you're manufacturing the RNA. Um, uh, this is more or less the, the, the only points where uh, it really could make a difference. And uh, as we are holding on the RNA um, for all our vaccines, we have got a rabies vaccine, which is um, already in the clinics uh, for a while, that we have seen that the property is that you can have RNA pretty stable. Uh, and then certainly on the product by product or target by target, you have to reevaluate uh, again. And with the COVID-19 vaccine candidate we have got in the clinic, we see the three months. Well, the, you see it within three months, but the mystery, I think, to all of our viewers and listeners is almost back to the 1950s, and I remember the liquid nitrogen in doctors' offices as well. Is that what we're heading back to, is we're going to have those metal containers with the smoke coming out of them when I was a kid? No, I don't think so. Um, as uh, we have got a stability of the COVID-19 vaccine candidate already at three months, and this is up uh, to, to uh, three months minimum, so it will be extended because all what we do is real time. And you have to see that uh, now the RNA vaccines, not only in our hands, but also in the hands of the others, this is brand new, we can make a difference. And then certainly the development of the stability will increase as well and will uh, will get better and better over time. This is what we see. And, you know, this is really something we have to work on and we will. So given the fact that you're on the front lines of this actually manufacturing uh, potential vaccines, can you give us a sense of your timeline of how quickly you think that manufacturing could get ramped up and distribution channels could get uh, solidified so that we get a critical mass of people uh, immunized against the virus? <laughs> Well, you know, we are uh, mRNA manufacturers, not only developers on the one side for the molecule, but uh, to have it as products, but also manufacturing, because this is what you need since 2006. And it is certainly the scale up you always do according to what you have got in the pipeline. What is the need you really to, uh, uh, to have the capacity for? When we started two years ago with our fourth product line, um, which is an industrial scale, um, nobody really was believing in uh, that you need this big scale. Certainly nobody knew at the time that we are talking about COVID-19. But since the beginning of this year, all this capacity which is going to be built up, and as we are actually building this up, not only we uh, at CureVac, also others, uh, this is mRNA uh, capacity which stays even beyond COVID-19. It will be a part of the preparedness uh, 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 thought, because there will be other viruses coming, and, and RNA can make a difference, obviously, and, and for that the capacity is there. But you can't get from zero to 100 within a minute, but uh, all what is, at the moment, what we see as scaled up worldwide, globally, um, uh, beyond CureVac even, there will be enough capacity to, to really vaccinate the world well, let's say until the end of next year. So, uh, Franz Werner, when you talk about mRNA and uh, the potential differences between the vaccines, Tom Keen's ears light up, uh, or his eyes light up and his ears perk up as he tries to uh, imagine the, uh, the the sequencing here. Most people's eyes glaze over. They don't know the difference from one vaccine to another. People talk about how it's important to have multiple vaccines, but does it complicate the issue? I mean, who gets what and why is that important? Well, we will see, as, as this is what we are doing is all in real time. If you compare it with other vaccine developing uh, uh, strategy in, in the past, so whatever was a, uh, the real uh, world in the past, this really has been accelerated without doing any concession to the safety and tolerability of the vaccine. But you have to see it target by target, and this is COVID-19, and what it does to the immune system, how long the protection will be, this is all to be seen. At the moment, there are, you know, head uh, <clears throat> runners uh, on not only on mRNA, but also on protein-based and uh, viral vector-based technologies. And we will have to see how long is really the protection level, uh, the memory effect, 
And what does it do to uh, the different immune systems of uh, well, people with indications, uh, respiratory indications, elderly people? And this is all what we will find out. What we see is that most probably most of the vaccines differently have different properties and then certainly for the different needs. And therefore it is good to have more than just one vaccine in order to see this later, what is most appropriate for which kind of target population.